Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folani. Uh, well, welcome to the first day of the week, first working day of the week, seeing as um, uh, you all had a bonus yesterday. I said you all, I didn't say we all, because we were here yesterday, and you were watching from home. <laughs> but it's good to have you uh, with us and uh, everybody in one place. Okay, where, what should we be talking about today? Change. I thought we should talk about change. And um, really, very simply, what is change? Now, leaving politics out of it, we're not, we're not going into the politics area. We're just looking at the whole concept of change. It's very, very important because it's, it's, it's all in the air. In fact, the ruling party arrived on the one word slogan. Uh, but now to examine, what exactly does that entail? What exactly is change? Well, my guests this morning, we've got Professor Mrs. Uh, Mopilola Omoyegun, uh, who is of the Department of Educational Foundation, that is Guidance and Counseling, University of Lagos. Thanks for coming on, Prof. Thank you. And uh, we also have our friend, Dr. Austin Weze. He lectures at the Pan-Atlantic University. Thank you very, very much for coming on. Thank you. We, th we thought we'd look at the concept of change. And um, even though you can't really avoid it, it probably has to come into it, uh, the, the, the active, uh, the fact that um, we are actively in a change regime. But I, want us to, I wanted us to look at the more psychological, more mental aspects of change. So um, let me start with you, if I could, Prof. The, the, the concept of me being who I am now and um, deciding not to change anything about the way I think, the way I speak, the way I act, uh, but nevertheless still want change, um, how plausible is that? Well, thank you very much. It means you are not being honest with yourself. Because if you want change and you are not ready to change, uh, then things will not move. Uh, but I'm ready really to concept? receive the change. Okay, I'm to ready receive. to receive uh, uh, the change, uh, especially the if other people oh, can, can be cooperative. Okay, if other people could be cooperative, that means you expect other people to change. But what is this change itself? You know, it implies a kind of transformation. You know, you, something different. And if you want something different, you, you are inclusive. Because, uh, you know, the concept of change begins with you. That you want something, that, that you are expecting something. That, that and you can't remain stagnant in the position and expect something to happen. Why do you think that caused something of a furore, ma'am, when that line that you just used went out there, um, change begins with you. Okay. Or in this sense, it was really uh, directed because, at, yes, the, uh, at the reader or the <laughs> receiver of the message yeah. that you, 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 change begins with me. Uh, there was something of a, of a fury. People yes. didn't seem to appreciate that sentiment that's, very much. That's, that's correct. Uh, because people are always resistant to change. And the concept of change seems to be a permanent phenomenon in life. So it's just natural. People don't want to change. And psychologically, they are expecting others to change. And that's where the problem lies. Because it's a mental thing, mental sense. Okay, I'm here now in this position. So it's easy for people to point accusing fingers at others. You change. Whereas they should see it as a collective responsibility. If you want others to change, then it has to you know, start with you, I yourself. Mm -hmm. How do you perceive people? What exactly are you expecting to change? How does it affect you? I mean, if others have to change, then it affects you. All right. Um, I'll come back to you, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Moise, um, uh, what, what Prof. Uh, Amoegun has just said there, if I were to dare to try and summarize it, I, I guess she's saying, be the change that you want to see. that a child in the formative years, you know, grows, there's a transformation going on, mm -hmm. right from embryo to um, other stages, and then the child is born, and um, the child begins to do all manner of things, and uh, again, begins to crawl, begins mm -hmm. to walk, mm -hmm. begins to, you know, at 18 months, for instance, yes. 
Yeah. Uh, you know what, uh, yeah. Austin? I, I beg your pardon. I'm going to have to interrupt you because um, there's a slight technical issue. In fact, we'll go to a break because I understand that at home you can't hear Dr. Mwesi. So we'll just, mm. we'll just go on an express break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, please. Okay, we're back now, and I think we have it all sorted out now. Um, our guests, Professor Mokwilala Omoegun and uh, Dr. Austin Wenze. Yeah. And um, Professor Omoegun has just finished telling us which, uh, that which I summarized into mm -hmm. uh, her probably saying that, be the change that you want to see. Yes, <laughs> and I was um, trying to explain, <coughs> going back to developmental psychology, and how that a child formed right from embryo to, you know, the child is born and uh, the child begins to walk, and these are forms of transformation. And um, the child, especially the female child, at 18 months, 80% 80 of her faculty is already developed. 18, yeah, 80 18 months, yes. At 18 months? Yeah, 18, 18 months. The boy child, Junko? The boy <laughs> takes about forever to do. There you see, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. At, <laughs> at four, the boy is still trying to learn how to, wow. you know, speak and all that. And they, the girl child is out there. Out there, yes. a chatterbox, you know. So, um, and it, all these things go on and on, and a child cannot remain, you know, stagnant. It ch the child changes, grows up, and all that. But again, let me also say that there's a, a one book that I read as an undergrad in the university. I, uh, it called The Mutable Self. It describes, you know, different stages of changes, transformation that uh, uh, somebody goes through. You, already, you were once uh, in primary school. People ask mm -hmm. you, who are you? They say, oh, I'm a primary, still, uh, primary school pupil. You graduate from primary school, you go to a secondary school, say, who are you? I'm a secondary school student. Then on and on to the stage we are at now, saying that I'm a broadcaster, seasoned broadcaster, award-winning broadcaster. These are the different stages. Nobody remains stagnant. Mm -hmm. Changes occur in different levels of our uh, human development. And that is one thing that we carry on in our lives. And saying that you cannot change people. Mm -hmm. You have to change yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is when they say that change begins with you. If you want to, if I want to change you, Yuri, I have to change myself. There is also a book I read. It's called The Tempered Radicals by uh, Deborah Mayer, uh, Mayer Sen. You know, he talked about the change transformation, how, you know, people, uh, you know, the radicals that transform organizations. It might not be the top CEO, but there was a case of a John who lived about 20 miles from office. But by 6.30, he gets to the office, sits down almost two hours before the others arrive. Those who are living five minutes away from the, you know, from the office. So because she, he, never, he was doing his own thing. But that young man, John, transformed the organization, brought about a change in that organization, about late, lateness to office, absenteeism, and all that. People began to see John, if you, John, can you know, really come to work 20 miles away and come early, do everything. And me, you know, I'm just five minutes away. No, I have to, I have to do something about it. So Jane, uh, John actually John changed, changed, changed his colleagues yes. uh, by, 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 by his, his own, own behavior. behavior. Yes. He now, didn't try, he didn't make behavior. effort to change his colleagues. Now, he was just doing the right thing. And that brought about transformation in the organization. Uh, Okay, this is what we are saying, that you see, life itself and things changes. Nobody can remain stagnant, and you are talking about progress. If you want things to move, then you have you know, to be on the move yourself to make things happen. Uh, Prof, um, the fact that we're even talking about uh, needing to change at all uh, means that there is something uh, about ourselves that we, we do not prefer. Oh, yeah. and, and we want we, we want to come away from that in, in fact some some psychologists have said that um, the totality of our life and our experience right now is, is a function of the way 
we've been thinking mm -hmm. uh, so much so that we've thought the uh, we, we have taught the subconscious part of ourselves to be able to do it on its own in other words they say that's a habit right there mm -hmm. now changing a habit whether it is of thought of deed or act how easy is that hmm. i like that it's not easy <coughs> because you know, as i tell people life itself is not easy so if you want to move to make progress then there's need for some sacrifice in other words, it's going to be hard. Yes, sacrifice, some conscious efforts. I won't say even unconscious. Conscious efforts. Oh, because the unconscious is running the show right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you now need conscious effort. Uh, conscious efforts to make things happen. I mean, if you want to be progressive, you want to make an impact in life. In fact, you see, just looking at what he has said, that life itself is in stages. So when we look at that concept, like a child that is born even before birth, you know, in the womb, the mother is expectant, you know, the time the baby will be born. After birth, it continues to grow and grow. So changes at every stage. And when there are changes, you're happy. Mm -hmm. But that is not easy. That was said, life itself, it's not easy. That is saying that life is a struggle from cradle to grave. Uh, Austin also said that, um you can't really change anybody else. It's that difficult. You, that, well, exactly. It's difficult. Be, be, because it has to people. be voluntary, right? Yes, it, that was it, a conscious effort. It has to come from, from within. Yes. Uh, so, so I guess maybe if we were to relate this for the moment uh, just to, to outside there and our life and uh, the fact that this administration were in a change administration, um, I suppose the trick would now be how to persuade people to accept the, the, the notion that... Um, you, we need to change. Uh, that, yeah. that we need that there is something about <coughs> us that we need to change. Uh, that, if that, if there is no that, agreement, that, I guess there's uh, going to be yes. a problem. And uh, I think that's where the problem lies. People are expecting something like a miracle to happen. No, not looking at themselves as individuals, but looking at there that yes, we've been going through some, you know, I would say, turbulent times. Traumatic experience, everybody is affected. So everybody naturally wants a change. Yes, everybody naturally wants a change. So the change, but there's somebody a else has come in to, give, to, to, to fill that gap and say, okay, we are providing you a change. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem <coughs> lies. It doesn't work like that, does it? Doesn't it doesn't work like that. You no. can't just mouth change. No. You're going to have to work at it. I work at it and get people convinced that we are going to work together to achieve this change that we want. It's not going to be easy. It comes for a sacrifice. And maybe that point, uh, understandably, wasn't sufficiently stressed yeah, right. by the politicians in the electioneering yeah, campaign. Yeah, the first part of what you said is probably what everybody grabbed onto. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, it's too tight, it's too oh, tough, it's too tight. Oh. Uh, we want a change. Uh, but the ah. other part about it's going to be, <laughs> excuse my French, bloody difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, that part of it, uh, understandably, wasn't emphasized. It wasn't emphasized. But yeah. we still, nevertheless, bought it we bought change and now we have to work it yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you know, because there's no alternative to change <coughs> no, is there no no no. there's no alternative and again there are different stages you know yeah, let me use this um uh analogy by um, you know uh, the uh, a, a, a philosopher from denmark soren kierkegaard he talked about you know in exist man's existence that there, there, diff there are three stages or three phases in a man's uh, uh, life, a man in generic terms, both women and all that. Now, he said that from birth to uh, at age 18, months, 18 years or thereabouts, 1825, you know, you are all what they call the aesthetic stage, whereby everything goes. You want to paint the town red. You know, you're, you know when you were young, a younger man, you know, all the ladies, all the parties, and all the, this thing. You know, your red shoe, everything, you wear it, go to parties. Uh, both but, of us, so. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, at, between 25 and 35, you know, you're beginning to think of, you know, yourself as, um, you know, begin to drop some of the habits, the bad habits that you have. And, and at, at the end of the day, what happens? 
you know, at that, for the, we move on to the next stage of life, which is the ethical stage. You now begin to s uh, differentiate the right and wrong. Begin to say, mm, you, already, you know, I used to do this, but again, let me keep this aside. If I used to drink, let me slow down my drinking, you know, but then you are married, you have children, more responsibilities, and all that. You do that at age 65, then you're then at the, the philosophical stage whereby you know you try to get closer to god mm -hmm. because you know you don't know don't what know awaits you out there mm -hmm. you're the evening of your life he said well like friedrich nietzsche a german philosopher that said there was no god but at the evening of his life he said well let him live a good life even if there's no heaven at least he had mm -hmm. made sure he lived a good life mm -hmm. if there's seven of them, he can mm -hmm. also yeah. go to That's heaven you know so these are the stages of life that you know and these are changes you know, and that's why we said that sometimes it depends on the period of your life, you know, then a certain thing will happen to cause you to change. And let me also say this, that to change any society, you have to change the mind of the people, the way they think, the way they drive. Say there's a traffic light, people now go, boom, beat traffic light and all that. Why don't you? as little as that obeying traffic uh, rules okay and uh, uh, that's changed once you begin to consciously tell yourself no i won't be traffic light anymore mm. you know or consciously say look i won't steal anymore or consciously do something you know that change a habit you know because habit you know for for something to become habitual to you mm. it seems that you must constantly be doing the thing you know like a, a same by an animal. They say once is not enough. No, it's not enough. You can't demonstrate change at once. All. No. You it have, hasn't become exactly you. That process. It's a, it's so you have to mm -hmm. keep, keep at it. Keep at it until it forms a habit. Once it becomes a habit, then it's becomes natural it to you. Yes. Second but nature to you. I would, I, I would dare to suggest that perhaps the whole concept of change, ma'am, is, um, is not yet a habit. Uh, no. Apart from those who are into personal development and understand, appreciate fully, uh, the, 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 the value and significance of change, those who are on their own private so. personal journeys and quests, the matter of wanting a whole populace to, to, to see it differently. Um, in a society where people have been used to changing as a result of some benefit, Mm -hmm. Give me a benefit, I'll change. Mm -hmm. I was going to vote for Austin before, but if you come <laughs> along and say, look, uh, look, here's 25,000 to it. And I say, oh, you know what? I think I'm going with I Prof. Never, yeah. Now, that is not change. But, but well, it is, it is a change of mind, but this is ridiculous. Yeah. It's not what we're talking about. It's not that concept of uh, moving into a new yeah. state of being. And I guess that's what the problem is. In other words, I imagine, is it, ma'am, that you are going to try as much as possible to forget how we were yesterday that you don't want to be anymore <laughs> and now create a new being. How doable you is see, that? It's not easy. I, I, I want to say it's not possible. <laughs> you can't just change overnight and say, no, no, okay, no, 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 overnight. I it's move, forget the past. Yeah. This is the present. Mm -hmm. I must leave it. And it has to be positive. Yeah. You see, the problem we're having basically as a nation is about our values. No. In the years gone by, mm -hmm. values were being inculcated in our children right from the homes. But somewhere around the line, we have thrown values into the room. Those be. And if something is missing, then you have to build it. Yeah, but how do, how, how do you think that changed, Prof? Uh, values, we, we were people that lived by our sense of values. Yes. Stealing was shameful. It was a disgrace to the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it it, 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 it evolved shameful. ever so imperceptibly uh, that um, uh, nowadays people are convicted of stealing and uh, they still get chieftaincy titles. Yes. Oh, uh, so the society learned all of this stuff mm -hmm. and accepted and it. And they <laughs> have imbibed that. Oh, it has become something like a culture now. If you just make kids by any means, people will help you, will judge the people. And so if the young ones, the coming up generation, see it as a normal process. And so what incentive do you think there is for people of that ilk to, to, to want to change? They've benefited from uh, a state of being that we say is not going to help the nation. Uh, that's where they need that orientation. There is need to provide adequate orientation for them to accept. They need to change. 
What does the orientation race. mean? When I, when I hear so, people yeah, talk about uh, the right, appropriate, adequate uh, orientation, I wonder what it means. Does, does it mean that there's going to be a ministry or department somewhere that's going to be a mental police? No, no. you already uh, Ministry no. of Orientation. Or, sorry, madam. You don't even need a ministry. Let me just finish that. Okay. Yes. You don't need a ministry. Orientation. The change, I mean, bringing about orientation should start from individuals. Mm -hmm. Then we can reach out from, because we say that society is, well, begins from the home. Charity starts from home, then the community. Getting people together right from the home, you can have that orientation. The way you teach your children, by examples, practical examples. For instance, the story, the illustration he gave us. Children are supposed to look at their parents as their role models. The parents are already adults. If they could imbibe that orientation themselves, that is personal philosophy, inculcating the value for discipline, for hard work. And the children, the young ones, mm. when they look at that, that's the orientation they are seeing. Indeed. It starts from you, it starts <laughs> from your home. Then by the time we get to a larger society, to the community, in the schools, then you bring that change, that orientation to them teaching them the right thing, showing them practical examples, organizing seminars, then that's a larger one. Yes. Uh, organizing seminars, talks, and so on. But people have to look at good models who they can learn from and copy from, doing the right thing. That's the kind of orientation that we are talking about. N now, uh, Austin, uh, Prof says that the, the family, really, is where it's all at, and all the examples <laughs> you heard, what she just said. Yeah. Uh, but, but how about a situation uh, you, we, we've heard the expression again that uh, when you fight corruption, it'll fight back. Uh, if supposing that there are too many people that perhaps, they're not that, that many really when you look at it mm. globally, but if there are people who have benefited from a wrong way of being, uh, the way we were that we want to come away from, uh, and to, to buy into change is effectively going to pauperize them. And mm -hmm. these people have kids, they have families, they have dependents that are looking up to them for direction. Um, that's a problem right there, isn't it? Because yes, yeah. You see, you're, you're, uh, sometimes you need the shock treatment. Uh, somebody to go through a traumatic experience to actually change. And that's well, why they, they say that's what, that's what usually brings about change if yes. it is going to, but right. we, we don't have to go to that extent. No, they, no, say, no, no, no. they say we <laughs> don't need to, <coughs> no, but, but it's just that human, human beings are like yeah, that. Sometimes you need a shock treatment. A crisis of some yes, sort. Yes, mm -hmm. some crisis that will bring, you, bring about your this thing. But again, she mentioned something that is very critical. Now, role modeling and our value system. Mm -hmm. You know, what we're going through as a nation is a crisis of values, especially in leadership. Our, sometimes our, the people that we put as our leaders, you know, their, their personal value system is, is warped in the sense that mm -hmm. <coughs> it's different it's, it, because what drives you is your personal value system. Mm -hmm. You see, if you define your personal value system, for instance, acquisition, you know, or inordinate struggle for power, inordinate acquisition for something, greed, that's what drives you. Your personal value system is behind every action you take. Is behind everything that you do as a human being. You know. So once you, what the, what we need to do is to look at the values. Okay. And that personal value system that you personal, said people are are, are being yes. true to. Yes. And then where does it start from? There are in families. There are some family values, and once it's broken down in the home, the child you know gets his own. He evolves his own personal values based on this. I'll give you an example. Uh, many, many years ago, when 419 was uh, the Vogue, mm. you know, and uh, on in, in the national TV, a five-year-old boy was asked a question, what would you like to be when you grow up? He said 419. <laughs> and they asked him, why? He said, our neighbor there, he drives a big car, he wears big coats, he lives in a big house, and he said 419. That's the kind of thing that he wants to be. So we don't have enough role models. You know, in every society, you need a critical mass of the right thinking, right doing people mm. to change that society. Mm. Mm. But, you know, role modeling is, we don't have enough people that we can call role models. Mm. Uh, then I, I want to ask Prof another question because she brought up the matter of um, personal values, uh, personal value system. Now, how, how do we arrive at that which I refer to as my 
my, my code of personal values. Is this something subconscious or, uh, or unconscious? Sometimes the two can be used interchangeably, not it always. Be, yeah. but, but, but or is it something that I sat down and said, you know what, I, I want to sort of find out who I am, what, what makes me tick. And um, I think I just won't stop until I have 57 houses. And I, I won't stop until I've got 14 million US in the car. Is it as, as, as direct and intentional as, as that? Or do we somehow unconsciously uh, absorb these notions and then carelessly say that they are our own and then begin to live by them? It's a combination of factors. To have a personal value you know, stems from the fact that, okay, you are from a home and we have family values. And gradually, you know, the individual person is affected by you know, the environment. Okay, ma'am, I'm going to interrupt you. Forgive me for doing so. Um, we've got to go on a break. But when I come back, I'll pick it up exactly from your explanation of <coughs> how we arrive at our sense of values. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. So we're having a big conversation today in a, you know, unfortunately we don't have all the time we'll need for that big a conversation. We'll do what we can with it. Um, we're looking at what exactly uh, is change. And um, our guests are Professor Mokwela Laomoyegun and uh, Dr. Austin Wednesday. Uh, Prof, you, you, we were saying just before we had to go to break um, that our sense of personal um, values is at the center of it. And so uh, if there's going to be change, there will be instances where this sense of this, this, this personal value system that we have is going to have to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I was saying that to, to develop a personal value, you know, it starts from, we say that there are two factors responsible for whatever a person turns out to be later in life. And the two factors are heredity and the environment. Hmm. You know, heredity refers to the genetic traits. Okay passed on to the child you know, from the parents. And that starts at conception, over which any child doesn't have you know, any role to play. But well, the parents decide that. Now, it follows that you know, whatever a child has inherited, so there are some values that a child could have inherited from the parents. And then I talked about role modeling. Mm. When the child grows up in the family, the family is the first mm, agent of socialization nice. of the child. So some values are inculcated in the child right from birth as the child continues to grow in the home. And that's why I said we have missed it. But we still have some homes where these values are inculcated in children. Now the child begins to form a personal value based on what Society. has been inculcated into him from the home. But now he grows up, you know, second year of socialization, that's the school, now goes to the environment. So the environment, which is the second factor or the second agent of socialization, the environment now takes over and can affect what the child has imbibed. So developing personal value, all these factors combined, what the child has gotten from home, mm -hmm. and then the influence from the environment, from peer group, from people you could see outside, people are making money anyhow, you know, bringing money. There was a time I was working with them in the school, you know, providing a counseling program, and a young child, I think it was just about 14, I was bringing you know, foreign currency to school, trying to buy over friends. He wanted, mm -hmm. to, because when we started asking questions, people said, just give them dollars, one sterling. How is, was he getting the money? You know, some children you know, reported and invited him. I said, well, my dad has a lot of money, which he keeps in his bedroom. So this boy had access to the man's bedroom. I would just take foreign currency, you know, started spending it anyhow. That kind of a child wouldn't have any value. And that kind <laughs> of a child is going to become an adult. Yes, of course. And it's going to have That's the road the values thing we're talking about. Has. Yes. Uh, Dr. Moise, the, um, the, the values that we're talking about, our sense of values, our individual personal sense of values, um, how easy are those to change? Well, it's, uh, uh, she rightly mentioned in society, the environment is like a catalyst, you know, to, um, to change, changing human behavior. 
And uh, that's why we have laws, institutions that, you know, checkmate some of those things. You know, for instance, if you're aware, in a well police society mm -hmm. and you're a ruffian, for instance, you know there are certain limits. You know, that's why you have all these law enforcement agents okay. just to Because take on. they know that yeah. human yeah. beings don't want to change. They don't want to change. Uh, and human so beings don't want to change. That's why we change. need law enforcement in, law enforcement, in the first instance. Yes, so that they, to, to make, you know, beat you to shape and yes. make you fall in line. Yes, 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 you know? yes, yes. Make you fall in line. As you're talking, you're also using uh, the whip as well, in a, in, especially in the home when a child yeah, is But that's up. for civil and societal <laughs> infringements. Uh, but how about mental, mental cases of um, uh, b b perhaps unhelpful mindsets and sense of values? Yeah. No, 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 no police can come and arrest you for wrong thinking. No, you see, because, um, you know, when you move to a new society, I've, I've seen families, when they move to another environment like the U.S. They conform. They conform. Once at the airport, you conform. And there's this case of a family that moved to U.S., and uh, the child, first day in school, they said, if you, your parents beat you, call 911. Mm -hmm. So the child came back from home and said, mommy, you know what? Anytime you beat me, I'll call 411, 911. Oh. That's what they told me in school. The mother took him out in the evening and showed him the city of New York or, you know, and said that this is America. Mm -hmm. Came back home and said, this house is Nigeria. This one is Nigeria. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nigeria. Good morning, yes. Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth calling from Yaba, good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead now, Kenneth. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, talking about um, the topic you're discussing, talking about change and um, values. I heard the. What is change? What do you know as change? Yes, I. Change is um, is a positive. Um, influence, but I want to contradict what um, the professor, the female professor, just said. She was talking about change, which is supposed to start from the house and for, with oneself. I have been opportune to see her one or twice. Talking about moral values, for me, I would say it is wrong for her to come on air to talk about moral values when. Well, that's the nature of our program. We take all sorts. Um, I didn't know where he was going to mm -hmm. land, but um, mm -hmm. to say it's wrong to talk about moral right. values, I, I, well, nobody knows where that uh, mm -hmm. is coming mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. you know, but you, Prof, you probably <laughs> are used to it. Um, so, so, so we have this situation where I, I, I didn't get a straight answer from you as to whether it is easy to change our um, value system. It, well, it's, it's not so easy, but <laughs> you conscious effort. Yeah. You only have a to conscious effort. Oh, you're yeah, not going to make a conscious effort if you don't care about no, the matter. No, you see, because it has to be important to you yeah. that this thing, that change that you're looking for. You may not know that you have a change, but something will happen that will force you. You make a conscious effort to begin to do things right in the right way Usually you need to that think happens, right that happens you, you hear it a lot um austin for, forgive me for interrupting you you hear it a lot when somebody is locked up for instance mm -hmm. uh, maybe even innocently maybe politically mm -hmm. and you see that they undergo these changes of course and mm -hmm. uh, it's a totally different mm -hmm. event. so uh, crisis they say yeah. sometimes leads to that last, but, but that, last mm -hmm. night a friend of mine we we're talking about this thing this uh, change you know unofficially uh, you know, and then uh, my friend told me an experience when he was a first year in the university, his uncle, they were driving to the village and his children were plucking oranges and one of them fell t you know, to the road and the child without looking went to pick up that orange mm. and car kind of knocked him off oh. and he died. So they had to make a report in the, this thing and he had to be detained. So he that said must that have been a traumatic experience. A traumatic experience. I said that had that that experience, he never forgot it. And that changed him. That changed him. Mm. Okay. All the uh, things that he does. Yes. He, he had a different outlook different on life. Out of life. Uh, Shola, thank you very much for holding on. Please go ahead now. Good morning, Nigeria is all small. Good morning. Um, change. Everybody knows that and everybody embodies that, even animals. Change. Uh, plant changes too. 
So it's about location, moving from one point to another, moving from one attitude to another, yeah. moving from one uh, uh, system to another system. So in, in the case of Nigeria that uh, brought about this topic, it is the change of the person that we are talking about. And it's going to be influenced by two people, the religious, a religious leader, that is on the spiritual aspect, yeah. either we like it or not, and come the, the political leader, either be it of a military type or it's just about one man from each side. Because when a system is decayed, it takes the spiritual uh, uh, lecture, either from the church or from the mosque, to orientate the thinking of the man. We have a culture in Nigeria where people, there are some states where you wear, you, you are naked, it's not an issue. But at a point, uh, the, 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 the understanding of a, a kind of a religion will change that kind of orientation that you cannot go naked, just as a kind of attitude where you kill human beings in those days, a, a governmental policy will come on board and one man will tell you that cannot work anymore. So when it comes to the human race, it must be by one leader, either from the spiritual angle or from the polit uh, political angle, which is uh, the governmental. Yeah, yeah. So we Shola, need to understand. Shola, Shola, I yes. hear you loud and clear, but how about the individual part? Is there an individual aspect to change? Yes, there are individual aspects of change. It not depends on where this person is coming from. It's going to be influenced by the religious body or by the political institution. These two, these two, these two institutions are so important in the life of a man. You will understand that even God, even God will hold leaders responsible based on the attitude and characters of a, a community, a state, or a nation. So it goes with even, you discover that if God could hold people responsible, that means the leaders, it then shows that the people might not know the right thing to do, but it's embedded in one man to rechannel the, the mindset of the people. Okay. Look at Nimrod. Nimrod in the Bible is one, of, is, is, is one of the people that are so strong that could change the psyche of a whole people to begin to build a, 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 a tower to meet God. If not for God in the spiritual context of it as a leader in that regard to destroy their plan, they would have achieved their aim in a, in, in, in a certain way. So in our own case, because I'm so concerned about Nigeria, it is time for our leaders, our, our, our spiritual leaders, to inculcate the value of the spiritual concept so that it is through these people, either you call them Buddhists, Abalists, whatever they, they are called, because the scripture says, the, the normal language of the scripture that I understand. It's a righteousness exalt a nation, and sin is a reproach, which means it's the character of the person who holds to the righteousness. It's not the righteousness that you are born again, you are not born again. It's about doing the right thing. One man telling the whole people that this is the way, this is the way we are going to be doing things because they trust him, because they believe in him, and they see the right character of his word. Moving towards that direction, you will see people dancing towards it. Okay, thank you very much, Shola. Yeah. Really appreciate okay. your thank calling you. in, and I appreciate your sentiment. Thank you very, very much mm -hmm. uh, for calling in. Right. And yeah, whereas so I, I, I understand where Shola is coming from, yeah. but, okay. but I also wanted to say that um, much as I value the contribution on a corporate, public, national, political level that he's talking about, I'm also very keenly interested in the individual part um, because we started out by looking at how difficult it is to change individually. Uh, for instance, from being a smoker to being a non-smoker, mm -hmm. uh, from, from being a liar to being a non-liar, from being judgmental to not being judgmental mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, how easy is it to make these transitions and become a new being that doesn't smoke anymore, that doesn't judge anymore, that doesn't do those things I determined I don't want to be anymore. Information. I, I think I like part of his contribution. Sure, the I like everything. The spiritual aspect is sure. very, very important. I talked about the influence of the environment. Part of the environment is the places of worship. Yes. The spiritual dimension. Yes. You know, some people can really be influenced. By what they see yes. there and what they hear there. And then the spiritual realm. Consciously or unconsciously, dawns on them when they listen to people telling them about the implications of their behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, when we are talking about that orientation, I said the environment could affect the orientation. Churches, mosques, even those who go to other places of worship, the abalis, everybody. <laughs> if everybody starts talking about this change, 
in terms of behavior, human behavior, even the values we are saying people should inculcate, personal values, yes. they can be influenced you see, through we, what they hear, through we, what they read, through, you know. I, I, we, we've been hearing words like um, b b b values uh, and uh, the morals. Yes. Uh, I wonder if conscience factors into this. Mm -hmm. Because what I hear, what you tell me, Austin, mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't prick my conscience, uh -huh. uh, whereas the next person might have had a, 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 a total cathartic experience as a result of that, it might just run <laughs> off my back like uh, walk, water off a duck's back. Yeah. Does conscience factor into these matters of morals and uh, principles? And mm -hmm. uh, of course. You know, the conscience is that is like a bridge between the human spirit and God's spirit in man. That's a conscience. I'm going to come the back to you so that you can, yeah. that bridge, you're yeah. going to come and talk about that <laughs> bridge some more. <laughs> let me take, let me take uh, Babatunde, Mr. Babatunde is calling in from Sudere. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for holding right. on. Uh, good morning to the Prov and Dr. Onwazide. Thank you, morning. Thank you. Actually, I, I, well, I like the topic this morning. I would like to divine change as, um, as a process of uh, going, doing things differently. And doing things differently can either be positive or negative. That's right. Did you say divine well, change? No, differently. Doing things differently. Different yes. change. Yeah. Okay. Doing, doing things differently. It's a question of doing things differently. Different and doing things differently can either be positive. It's either like you change from your positive way of doing things to negative way, mm -hmm. or from negative way of doing things to positive way. Okay. It's, it's vice versa. Sure. But in the context of, of Nigeria, we have to emphasize on our leaders. Our leaders have to set the pace. Any leader, no leader can come out to tell his followers or his work to change from being corrupt to non-corrupt if the leader does not set the good example. I can understand Dr. Onwas today. He always emphasizes on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on our leader, the leadership taking the front, the front burner in changing Nigerians. We have to talk about change. All right okay. then. So you, you think it's the leaders? The leaders need to show us examples. Yes, they have to lead mm -hmm. by example. So that you we can. You cannot tell me to change. You what the change they brought to us was they are going to make everything change the life of Nigerians, and now is now turning around now saying they want we want they want Nigeria to change, and our leaders are still very very corrupt even at this present time. All right. Still corrupt. All, all right, Baba. Today, to thank you, thank we you very much. Change. Appreciate your call. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution. Now, that, that bridge, conscience, you said, is a bridge. Yeah, you said. Uh, that's because because how my, my sense of <laughs> values, I think, is very, very closely related to also my, my sense of conscience. Exactly. Because um, the closer your conscience is, the bridge is, the shorter the bridge, the more morally inclined the human being will be. Okay. Because, uh, uh, you know, because what, what the Spirit of God in you and the Spirit man does to, via the conscience is to, you know, touch, uh, you know, tr you know, just kind of trigger of your conscience to begin to, to be more conscientious. You be aware of what you're doing. I'll give you a personal example, but ho don't hold it against me. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I love personal examples. <laughs> you know, I, as, uh, when I graduated from university, I came back to Nigeria, and uh, a, f a friend took me to a church and uh, say, well, let's go and look for a new girlfriend. We can quarrel with my old girlfriend and all that. I won't hold it against you. Okay, good. <laughs> 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 you know, and I got there. Our yeah. intention, me and my friend, you know, just to go there and uh, look for girls to, you know. And then when we got there, the pastor just said something, that some of you came to this church to chase women, but mm. that's okay, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. In the course of that, you will now meet God. <laughs> <laughs> and that was exactly what happened to me, <laughs> and I turned true. around, and that was the last time. You ever went to church for that particular reason? Yes, I even chased women until I got married. There you mm. go, you know, there you go, that, lovely, lovely example. Let me, yes. let, let me bring in um, uh, uh, Mr. Elijah Hassan, calling in from Lekki. Good morning, Elijah Hassan. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Thank you for calling in. Good morning, Mr. Nweze, and good morning, Professor Omegu. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Thank you. Um, please, uh, let me, I was really captivated by what exactly is change. You see, we see change differently. But uh, what I'm hearing from you people this morning is a reflection of two of you. 
all of you are academicians. And you are now defining change from, the, from your own intellectual angles. I don't know. We are facing the public. And we should be able to say it in such a way that will communicate properly with the members of the public. Not everybody is as educated as two of you are. More especially, Mr. Wayne. Yeah, Mr. but Alaji Hassan, did you want to help us out? Alaji Hassan, time is, time is at a premium. Help us out. What, what's your understanding of change? Thank you. What exactly is change is this? Change is something that is constant. Either positive or negative change. Anytime you see change, it must be one of the two in place. Either good thing in place or the bad thing in place. Mm -hmm. We are emphasizing on the positive aspect all the time. People change from being good people to the bad people. Yeah. We don't look at that. We're not interested no, in that. No good. We're yeah. not interested in that. We're interested only in changing from the bad to the good. Uh -huh. Actually, what you are talking about change in Nigeria of today is the change people are calling for is the change from being recklessness well, is the change from being looters to being uh, 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 economical uh, uh, economic managers from being bad leaders to good leaders from economic downturn to economic buoyancy to anything positive and the role of the individual in that eh? and the role of the individual in achieving the that change. Individual. Okay. The individual. The change starts with everybody. Mm -hmm. We look at the leader. I beg to disagree with people saying that the leaders must change first. What are we, the followers, doing? Yes. A leader is out to change Nigeria for good today. We have good people in place. We have good people like General Muhammad Buhari. We have people like Professor Oshimbajo. We have people like Akade uh, 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 Fahimi. We have people like 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 but the only person I play. But what are we doing? What are we doing to help them? Because it takes two to tango. You cannot clap with a hand. So it's why are we not helping them? <laughs> Alaji Hassan, why yes, are we not helping them, do you think? Sir, we, we, are, we are not helping them. Because because up to tomorrow people are still living in their own negative ways. And you are expecting change to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. No matter what a leader does, if the followership is wrong, it will never reflect. Very good. Two of us, our hands must be on deck. I continue mm. to ask Nigeria. We are talking of General Muhammad Buhari. We voted for him because of his, for, of, of his integrity. What are we doing as individuals yes, in our home, at work, mm. and in our schools? What are we doing for, to contribute to the pool to make Nigeria great? Thank you very much, Alaji Hassan. I've got to let go of you now. Yeah. Appreciate your yeah. call. Let, and that, I think, is the crux of the let, problem. Yes. Yeah. Let me, let me the, just say. Uh, uh, in, 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 in capability. Yeah. You know, Somebody look, said, what can the people do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, you know, you know there's a, this concept of uh, a tragic hero. You know, you come in into a position of leadership, for instance, and through the wrong process. And you turn around and say, yes, I know I came through the wrong process. Let me do things right. And you begin to strengthen institutions to make sure that what brought you to power will not, you know, bring off. other. Yes, <laughs> uh, because if you allow it, in the same way you will destroy your process. And we might not be lucky enough yes. for a guy who wants e to affect exactly. The system. You may be one person, but the, a leader that is good is all alone. He needs to do salesmanship. He needs to sell the idea so that he can have a critical mass until you have a critical mass of people to buy into your idea. Yeah, yeah. There's no way you're going to change society. And, yeah. and the, the question yeah. then is, what do we do? Yeah. I, I think uh -huh. you've, you've, uh, you've uh, uh, singled out uh, living and leading by example yeah. Yeah. Yes. As, very, as, very as, as being helpful. Yeah. But I suspect that the decision to change still resides yeah, with the individual. Yes. The individual has to make the conscious effort to say, I'm going to begin this um, upward task. And it's climbing a hill. Yes, but again, it's climbing a hill. you need a law enforcement institutions that can checkmate them. Mm -hmm. Because don't forget yeah. human beings, freedom, free will, 
Okay, so that you know, as you have that free will, <laughs> there's a debate. They will debate. Oh, man is a free moral agent. Yes. They were not free. Oh dear. Well, I, 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 I can't believe uh, this program I looks think, like. Uh, you know. Time we're running out. Uh, yes. I think please, last uh, words, uh, individual wants. We are advocating for people to make conscious efforts. Mm -hmm. But I know that with God, all things are possible. Oh, okay. So I think we should seek solace in God. <laughs> the nation, as a nation, as no, individuals, you're, you're you look up you know, to that strength. To that strength. And the energy to change. God. Yes. Ah, well, no, so I, let I think that's the problem. We've run out of time. No, you're let me. Uh, we've run out of time. I know. I know. Because but you cannot change on your own if you don't have that determination. Yes. yes. And how do you get the determination? Uh -huh. You the sit down. Make conscious efforts and, if possible, turn to God for help. And do you think many people are doing that, man? We need to advocate that. That's part of the orientation I'm advocating for. I, I'm, I'm so sorry, Austin. No we, problem. We completely run no. out of time. No problem. But I think what this has shown, um, this, as far as I'm concerned, this five, ten minute conversation, what it has shown is that it's, it's, it's very, very difficult, it but is. there is no alternative. There's no alternative. No alternative. There's no alternative. So uh, the sooner we bog down and, and really try to get to grips with it and how that will be done uh, remains to be seen you've That's suggested right. a number of ways but i want to thank you very much for you know My having pleasure. this conversation uh, with us and uh, we, we if we didn't know it before we we know that uh, change is not beans as we say in nigeria it's mm -hmm. a very very difficult mm -hmm. task mm -hmm. but then yes. it is also said that there is no alternative yeah. to it yeah. no thank you very much yes. uh, professor mrs mokwilala uh, omo Egu, uh, department of um Educational Foundation and Guidance Counseling, University of Lagos, and Dr. Austin Weze of um, the Pan Atlantic University. Thank you both. Thank you. I'll be back tomorrow, God willing, with a fresh edition of the program. I'm Yori Folani. Bye bye for now.